there was a time where we could look 2016, 2020, and make some reasonable prediction about where we're going to be politically. Um, I, I think that's almost a fool's errand right now to for any political party to think that 16 is going to be like this. 14 may be our biggest year in the history of the country. And I know that's been said before, but in the wake of Citizens United, in the wake of corporate control, with the attack on labor, this crossroads we're at with healthcare in the country, and the moral fiber of asking the question of what do we do with sick people, do we deny them? These are fundamental questions that I think are, are hitting the sensibilities of Americans. When the Democrats had the White House, the House, and the Senate, President Obama was a big negotiator. It came down to a Senate seat in Minnesota, Al Franken against Norm Coleman. He was the 60th senator. And there were a lot of liberals going around America. All right, now we can get the health care we want. Now we can fix the tax code. Now we can make sure, make sure corporations pay their fair share. Turns out, it didn't work that way. We had so many olive branches going around. We wanted to work with the other side. As I said earlier in my talk, the conservatives understand power. I believe now the progressive movement understands the threat to the country, and I believe that the, the progressive movement in America right now understands that if we do win the House in 2014, hold on to the Senate, 2015 could be something big on immigration reform, could be round two of health care, could be real tax reform to revive the middle class in this country, could be the jobs package that Obama has not been able to get through, could be a commitment to infrastructure and public education which has been lacking. And so 14, I can't tell you about 16, I gotta see how 14 goes first. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, if Boehner holds the House and the Republicans hang on to the House, it will be more of the same. And that will put the progressive movement in a defensive posture to protect Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security and make sure that public education gets its proper funding. Make no mistake, the conservatives are going to come after the big three, what we call in America, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. They want to privatize everything they can get their hands on. They want to private. The first thing George Bush did in January of 2005, after winning re-election, he went on the road to privatize Social Security. That was a huge story. The story off to the side that nobody was paying attention to was Carl Rove was making sure all the prosecutors were getting fired that didn't line up with the way they wanted them to think. But they understand power. They have this, this plan. So the question is, as I see it politically in America now, what kind of a hangover will America have because of the shutdown that we've gone through? What kind of 60 days is it going to, I don't know how many days it is between now and the middle of, of, uh, of December when we've got to have a budget, and then the middle of January when we shut down the government again, and then February 6th when we're all standing around saying, well, I don't know, what bill do you think we should pay? I mean, if that's the way we're going to run our railroad, it is going to chip away at America's credibility. It is going to chip away at our, our, our chance to recover in some tough economic times. Now, you can't find a poll anywhere that says Americans want to change Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. It's all in the majority. These are, these are programs that we have paid into. They're earned benefits. People like them. Families love the security. And now, of course, the conservatives want to, they think that that's how we should pay for the war that we didn't pay for. We basically are in financial trouble in America for three reasons. We deregulated Wall Street on Clinton's watch. Glass-Steagall went down in 1999 when we allowed the investment banks and the commercial banks to go do whatever the hell they wanted to do, and your mortgage ended up in a hedge fund and flew off into outer space and nobody really knew where your mortgage went. <laughs> Okay, so number one, the deregulation of Wall Street has taken us a, a, a big reason as to why we are where we are. Wars that we didn't pay for, that we were told the Iraqis were going to kind of chip in with their oil and pay for that. Yeah, right. And then, of course, Medicare Part D. So we, but in the conservative world, I believe their generational effort has been to blow the federal budget deficit to the point where they could cut government back to where they want it. 
And now we are in such financial straits, and we have gone from Dick Cheney telling us that deficits don't matter to, oh gosh, we've got to cut our government back. What do you say we go after the retired? Let's start taking pensions. Let's start going after Social Security. Let's knock down Medicare and privatize it and voucherize it. I think those are morally bankrupt positions to take. And I think that right now, if the elections were held today, well, a poll came out this afternoon. <laughs> uh, I read this on MSNBC that uh, half is a record number. Half the American people think everybody in Congress should be fired. <laughs> well, <laughs> focus, liberals. This has not been our problem. We have been the consistent messengers and we have been the people who have constantly talked about the middle class. This has been a central theme for President Obama throughout. He is the one that has tried to do something with health care, and we have, and now they're attacking it. So um, 14, let's get through 14. But I think 14 is very pivotal, and if the Democrats can, can get control, 15 could be a huge legislative year for America. Now, if, if, if we don't win the House, if the Democrats don't win the House, then I think that we're going to see more obstruction, more attack on the big three, and less spending. Less spending.